Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Women Racing to Win, providing you coverage of all the women racing each weekend for the win. Joe Samuel, along with Daniel from Racers, the girls behind the helmet, we invite you to participate in the chat room with your questions and comments. We'll start off this episode with Amda Al Kabasi and another successful weekend. Oh yeah, absolutely. Good evening, everyone uh, from the other side of the Atlantic. Uh, you said it right, Joe. Uh, Hamda had another very, very strong weekend in the final round of the uh, Formula Four UAE Championship last last week. Uh, they were racing at the Dubai Autodrome, as this uh, this year the uh, the Formula Four Championship uh, based in the UAE has the, had a five uh, event calendar, always uh, going from uh, Abu Dhabi to Dubai, uh, the two main tracks uh, in the in the Emirates. And uh, Hamda, uh, uh, it's it's their second year racing in uh, in that championship. Last year it was their very first uh, uh, full season in single seaters coming from uh, from karting. Uh, and Hamda uh, co did very well and and won uh, three races last year. Then she went on to uh, to race in the Italian Formula Four Championship. Also did a uh, guest entry into the uh, German Formula Four Championship, which are as we often say, uh, two of the most uh, competitive single seater championships uh, in uh, in for for young talents in Europe. And uh, this uh, this time it was uh, again uh, a, uh, a very very competitive weekend for for Hamda. The, I, I think this year the Formula Four UAE Championship uh, has stepped up its game a little bit. There is it's more competitive. Uh, there are very very interesting drivers that will be racing in Europe in in the uh, in the summer season. Uh, and they, of course, they they uh, chose to to go to the UAE to race in the winter se uh, season season uh, obviously for the for the weather for the better weather conditions and uh, Hamda I think she had her best uh, weekend of uh, of the five uh, event calendar in uh, in Dubai at the, at the last round uh, she qualified not that well uh, she we are, we are always uh, used to see her uh, in the among the the top 4 I would say she qualified fourth in the in the first qualifying and then sixth in the second qualifying so she started P4 for the first race and uh, it was very, we, we have to say that uh, she was not competing for the title because it was uh, the, the final race of, of, of the weekend, the fi final race event of the weekend. And she has lost a little bit of uh, too much, po too many points uh, uh, with some uh, DNFs, uh, even though she had the podiums and, and more victories this year. Uh, but she was uh, P P running for P3 in the in the championship, and she was uh, P4. Uh, so not not championship ambitions, but still, definitely, she wanted to finish the season on uh, on a high with another victory, and she did just that in the first race when she managed to. Uh, to she had an, another the very outstanding uh, start uh, last year. She had a little bit uh, problems into the the start. She always had the pole positions last year. She was amazing in qualifying, uh, claimed all the pole positions in. In, in all the season, uh, but then she uh, had a little bit more problems in, into the in the start, uh, which I, I think she she managed to su she successfully uh, sorted out the, these problems in in the in the starts, um, gained two positions and uh, went straight into second place in in the first race, and then there was a safety car into the early stages of the race, and uh, at the restart she she had a little bit of a uh, of a tangle with with another driver, with uh, the, um, a, Ru a Russian driver that came uh, into the Vra Vladimir Lomko came into the the championship just for the final uh, round, uh, but just proved to be competitive straight away. Uh, they made contact, and uh, it was at the end it was deemed a racing incident because uh, after after that contact, Lomko had uh, spun and uh, dropped to fifth place. And the accident was under investigation by the stewards throughout the whole race. Amda did very well and, and won the race. She um, she accumulated enough margin, enough gap uh, to win. And we and we can see her uh, just after the the checkered flag as she climbs out of the uh, Abu Dhabi racing uh, uh, tattoos Formula Four car, and uh, she hugs with her father. Uh, Khaled, who is also a very successful uh, GT racer and uh, raced in Le Mans, uh, multiple winner in the uh, Emirates uh, in the 24 hour of Dubai, also very, very established racing driver himself. 
And uh, Hamda, as we said, won the first race, uh, even though the uh, victory was uh, under scrutiny of the stewards for a couple of hours also after the, after the checkered flag. But uh, fortunately, it was deemed a racing incident and Hamda uh, maintained her first place after the, the, the first race. Uh, then uh, she had another strong race into the, the second one of the weekend, even though the results did, don't, don't really show that. Uh, she was all weekend long, she was fighting for the top four positions, I would say. Uh, but then she had a, another contact and uh, this time she had the worst out of it and she spun and uh, re managed to rejoin the race, but then finished P9. Uh, in, the, in the third race, uh, she again, she always had very, very strong starts and uh, managed to, to climb from, from sixth to third. Uh, and then finished uh, again on the podium. She had a, a little bit more of a um, clean race, I would say. Uh, she also just had to um, defend from the return of uh, Enzo Trulli, the son of the uh, famous Formula One driver Jarno, uh, who had a very strong season as well into his, it's his first season in single seaters and was fighting for the championship with another very, very strong driver, uh, Dilano Van Toff, who had led the championship straight from the first race. Uh, Hamda was third, with, claiming another podium in the third race, as we said, and then in the, in the fourth one, which was the uh, uh, reverse grid race, she was starting P P6, uh, so she had a little bit more uh, uh, work to do to uh, to climb the the order. And uh, when um, the, the the championship fight was was really uh, on fire between uh, Van Toff and Trulli, who were, who were separated only by one point after 20 races. Um, Hamda did well and she managed to, uh, to climb uh, again into the top three, top four. Uh, she was fighting there for the victory, uh, but unfortunately another, another contact um, which uh, saw her spinning and she finished P10 the season, not like w what she wanted to, to, to finish the, uh, the championship, but still I think she was probably her strongest weekend, uh, fighting for the victory throughout all the four races, uh, cl uh, claiming one victory, one podium, um, and finishing ultimately fourth in the championship. Truly won the, the, the championship for one point uh, because uh, he managed to pass Van Toff in the final race. They were fighting for P4 and P3. Uh, Van Toff did the, the, uh, the fastest lap, which gained one more point, but it wasn't enough to win the championship. It was very, very exciting until the, um, the, the very, very final lap. Uh, truly in his first uh, season in single-seaters claims the, the championship and Hamda finishes P4. She is likely to, to go to, again to, to do the Formula 4 uh, Italian Championship this year in 2021, which is very exciting because uh, as a second year, she already knows the tracks, uh, which uh, it, it's an experience and that she lacked last year. Hopefully, uh, with the championship starting a little bit earlier than last year, we, uh, we're, gonna, we're having uh, hopefully some more uh, races with uh, good weather. Why last year, she also she always have had uh, the, the rain and she didn't really had more, much of experience in, in uh, rainy conditions. So hopefully it's going to be a better season for Hamda in the Italian Formula 4 championship. Uh, yeah, we're very excited to see her racing again back in Europe. Very good sign of her racing in Europe again. It's going to be very fun. Hopefully the weather does a little bit more on her side. Speaking about weather, of course, a lot of folks know Daytona 500 had a lot of rain issues and plagued the entire weekend, but thankfully it did not plague the NASCAR Camper World Truck Series in their first race of the year, which saw Haley Deegan making her second career Camper World Truck Series start. She debuted last year at Kansas Speedway and finished 16th. For the Daytona race, she qualified ninth in her Monster Energy Ford number one, making her Super Speedway debut in the Truck Series. Now, of course, last year, Haley, she was in the Arc Menard Series. In the Arc Menard Series, that is a very introductory level for Super Speedway racing. A lot of people were looking at her from her performance last year where she finished second place a lot of questions how will she do with this race especially in the trucks because the big thing at daytona you do have the huge pack so you can see here the lead pack and there's Haley right in the middle Haley was running up front pretty much most of the time the race was plagued with a lot of caution flags so we had the longest run 16 laps then the second longest run was only 10 laps before another caution 
In the super speedways, you don't have local yellows or virtual safety cars. You only have full course caution safety cars out there to collect the pack. So you have a lot of restarts. The field is jumbled up a lot of the times. I was running up front for part of the night, as I mentioned. Part of pack racing, she did fell back a little bit when she did make a move, lost the draft, started falling towards the back. When that happened, there was a crash ahead of her. She made it through it. That crash took out six trucks. However, three laps later, as the trucks were going through the backstretch, where a lot of speedy drive was still cooking up dust, she stepped off the gas. A lot of drivers call this checking up. They don't want to hit the brake, so they let off the gas. What this in return does, it makes the truck unstable in the rear end. So she spun on the inside and hit the inside wall, ending her day, unfortunately, for winning. She was able to keep the truck running. NASCAR does have a policy where if you can keep the vehicle running and fix all the repairs in under six minutes, meet minimum speed, you can continue on a race. So she was able to continue on. She finished 24th place out of 36 trucks that were in the race. In total, there was 46 trucks that entered, trying to enter the race, but only 36 could qualify for the race. So a bit of a disappointment for her, her especially considering a lot of people had high hopes for her after last year's ARCA race. But at least the big thing was she locked in a lot of laps. She survived the first eight cautions, just unfortunately that ninth caution was when she went out spinning. Another female in the race, of course, Jennifer Jo Cobb returned for her 14th season in the NASCAR Truck Series. Her number 10, Fastener Supply Chevrolet Silverado had a solid qualifying lap of 16th place. So starting mid-pack, and of course in the Truck Series or any race, when you're starting mid-pack, especially at the super speedways like Daytona and Talladega, it is very treacherous. The high likelihood of getting in a crash and starting that has started ahead of you significantly increases. Jennifer Joe Cobb ran a very smart race all night long, avoiding trouble in her number 10 Chevrolet. In total, 24 trucks were involved in crashes, and one driver was even involved in three different wrecks. Jennifer Joe Cobb, no issues. Brought the truck home in one piece, 18th place, a top 20 finish. With no qualifying for next Friday's race, essentially tomorrow, a lot of times for these starting positions with no qualifying, they go by your finishing position, owner points, and fastest laps. So Jennifer Joe Cobb will be starting 17th in her number 10 Chevrolet Silverado. Haley Deacon will be 23rd in her Ford F-150. And tomorrow's Daytona Road Course, the brake best, brake pads, 159 presented by O'Reilly, 7.30 p.m., 4.30 Pacific on Fox Sports 1. Now also Saturday next week, I mean, excuse me, two days from now, the NASCAR Xfinity Series will be racing at the Daytona Road Course and Natalie Decker will be making her series debut. She is running part-time in the Xfinity Series. She'll be starting 21st based on the owner points from last season. This race is the Superstar Batteries 188 presented by O'Reilly Auto Park, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 Pacific on Fox Sports 1. So definitely a lot of women racing for the win at Daytona this weekend. Oh, definitely. Uh, we also had uh, a very interesting race yesterday uh, going on. It was uh, the uh, GT Winter Series. I would say that uh, it's it's a really interesting championship that uh, we, we've we've fo started to follow this year because uh, the, there is a very competitive driver who is a um, sec racer, uh, very famous in the uh, sim racing uh, world. I would say uh, her name is Gabriela Hilkova. Um, she's maybe best known as Quick Gabby. Uh, she also did the uh, W Series uh, selection program, uh, selection tests in 2019. Uh, she went uh, straight into the, the final uh, sessions and also drove the Formula 3 car at Almeria in Spain. Unfortunately, she didn't make the final cut and uh, she was not selected to, to, to do the, 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 the championship in 2020, and which of course will, will see the entry list uh, uh, going into 2021 as the championship has been uh, uh, cancelled in, in, in 2020. 
2020. Uh, Gabriela, though, did the, also some races in the W Series Esports uh, League uh, last year, uh, where she famously won one race as a guest starter. So Gabriela, very, very competitive uh, in, in esports on, on iRacing, where she she's always very um, popular in her tw Twitch streams. Uh, but also on track, and uh, she finally she was back on track on on real race track uh, this year, after she had to take one year off uh, in 2020. In 2019, she was racing in the 24 hour race uh, championship, which is a very interesting uh, series that features uh, um, endurance races basically in GT4 and GT3, and she's racing in GT4 machineries. And uh, the GT uh, Winter Series is uh, basically a championship that will see a three event calendar, uh, two in Portimao and one in uh, Aragon. Uh, now they have uh, contested the second round in uh, Portimao in Portugal. Uh, in uh, um, not very common to see a race on Wednesday, but they did uh, both the uh, the race one and race two in uh, on Wednesday this uh, this week. Uh, and Gabriela did the uh, pole position uh, in both races and went on to win uh, with like a fifty second uh, gap the, the the first race in GT4 class. And also she was uh, on the overall podium in uh, among a very uh, cr crowded field of GT3 cars. So she was uh, ahead of most of the GT3 cars as well. Well, uh, the first uh, the first um, driver uh, at, at the finish line was uh, on uh, was racing on, on an LMP3 car, so a prototype. Uh, the second one was on a GT3, and Gabriela came home in fourth in, th in third, sorry, uh, in the GT3 Mercedes uh, uh, by Zach Speed. Uh, the second race was contested by her teammate, uh, and again they won the race uh, and fourth place uh, overall. Uh, so now they're very, they're very strong in the, into the championship. Unfortunately, they didn't win the first uh, uh, a race in the first weekend in, uh, again in Portimao, but they were P uh, two and P two and P three. They they did three races uh, in the first round. Uh, they had one race, uh, two sprint races where the, the uh, to, to each each driver, um, and then one one long race when they swapped uh, the seats in mid-race, uh, which was not the case for the second round in, in Portimao. We, we don't know yet the, the schedule of the final round in, in Aragon, but Gabriela uh, did very, very well uh, this week in, in Portimao, playing two victories. Uh, now he's looking very strong into the championship, and hopefully we will see her again in, in a GT4 uh, championship in, uh, in Europe uh, uh, later this year. Very exciting. Congratulations, Gabrielle and the team there on a well-deserved win. Arkham and Nar Series, they were at Daytona as well. And the Arkham and Nar Series, we had three female racers racing for the win. It took place Saturday morning before the NASCAR Xfinity race. The Arkham and Nar Series, of course, is a great introductory level for super speedways. And a lot of times, with that said, good place to find trouble. So the best thing to do, log laps, avoid the trouble, bring home the vehicle in one piece. Unfortunately for Brittany Zamora, that day ended very early. She was on the inside line, trying to just learn to pack the draft. When the vehicles ahead of her started checking up, somebody had to get off the gas, but it got loose or something. And of course, just like in the roads, if you're driving and you have four vehicles that suddenly stop, that fifth vehicle is gonna have less reaction time, rear end you. That's what happened to Brittany. She rear ended the vehicle ahead, a lot of nose damage, essentially ruining her race. She was done for the day. But with that crash, of course, Zamora was very unfortunate to not be able to log laps in her number 30 Ford. But definitely, at least we were excited to see that she was able to gain a little bit of experience in that short amount of time and at least be on the track, get some exp drafting experience. Now, one driver that did gain a lot of experience and had a really good run going down was Gracie Trotter. She started second after laying down a fast qualifying lap at Daytona. Gracie and her Venturini Motorsports 25 Toyota led the race for a while until she was passed. That pass was made by Derek Griffin, who took the lead from her 25 Toyota. But a lap later, the two made contact. Gracie did fell back and was working her way up the field until the number zero one of Chuck Harris had trouble. He essentially blew a tire. Once that tire blew in the corner of the Daytona Banking, the corners are banked 31 degrees. He slid up the track. Gracie Trotter, nowhere to go, crashes right into him. Gracie, with nose damage, was able to keep the vehicle going. 
However, at Daytona, aerodynamics is such a big factor. Without that aerodynamic advantage, she was unable to come up towards the front. She came home 23rd place, at least login laps in her first Daytona racing event. The big third final racer there was Tony Brakinger, the first ever American to enter a NASCAR sanctioned event. She moved up the field considering she started 31st spot. Remember, we had qualifying. So where Brady started much further towards the front, Brittany Samara was mid-pack for Tony, 31st. She was able to move up her 0-2 Chevrolet and stay out of trouble. Never lost a draft. I was even in the top 10 for a while. However, that fourth and final caution set up for an overtime scenario. NASCAR ARCA, if the race was to end under yell, they do set up a overtime to try to ensure the viewers and fans a green flag finish. They had a one lap shootout. During this one lap shootout, she got shuffled back to 18th place. But still, considering this is restricted plate racing, Tony, she was just seconds away because you have essentially a big pack of vehicles coming to the finish line. She could have easily stayed up in the top 10 or even moved up. But the big goals, considering her 31st start position, she ran a clean race. Top 10, significant accomplishment to come home 20th in your first race at Daytona. So definitely a big weekend for Tony, Gracie, and Brittany. Of course, very unfortunate Brittany went out early, but she's definitely going to be back and a force to be watching with in the future. Oh, absolutely. Um, coming back to Dubai, we also had last week in the uh, fourth round and penultimate round of the uh, Formula 3 Asian Championship, uh, which, as we, we often say, it's, uh, it's very interesting to watch because there are very competitive drivers coming from uh, several important uh, uh, Formula Championships uh, in, uh, in, in Europe, and they're preparing also their uh, 2021 uh, main seasons, I would say. There are, there are four drivers racing in Formula 2, there are several drivers that will be racing the FIA Formula 3 championships, more drivers that will come back to the Formula Regional European Championship. Uh, so a very, very uh, diverse and also very competitive field uh, this year. Uh, last year, of course, uh, Jamie Chadwick, the inaugural W Series champion, did the uh, Formula 3 Asia ch Championship and won uh, a race there. She was the first uh, female driver to ever win a regional Formula 3 race overall. Um, this year uh, we are we have uh, two more female drivers on the on the grid uh, they are uh, Hamna Alkubaisi Hamda's sister uh, she's 20 years old from uh, Abu Dhabi from the Emirates uh, she was the first arab woman to ever win a, a single seater race when she won uh, famously the formula 4 cup race uh, uh, together with the formula 1 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in 2019 uh, since then she has rose to international claim acclaim and uh, but then uh, had another stop year in 2020 due to the pandemic and due to the issues uh, uh, she was not able to race uh, so luckily we, we are seeing Amna back on track uh, despite it's her first season ever season in Formula 3 machinery so she definitely have a um, learning curve in front of her uh, she ha had a pretty decent uh, f first uh, three rounds uh, in in uh, Formula Three Asian Championship. Uh, unfortunately, the, the fourth round uh, was the luck was definitely not on on her side. Uh, she had uh, a 18th place finish into the first race, uh, but never was really competitive. Never really up there when when she expected. And then, unfortunately, she had two DNFs in the, in the second and third race. Uh, she had more contact. Unfortunately, unfortunately, she had a contact with Irina Sidorkova, the other uh, female racer on track in the Asian Formula 3 Championship. In the second race, in fact, they were battling in the, for the 17th and 18th position, uh, and they made contact, and Amna uh, had uh, a, um, an issue on, on, on the steering wheel. They, they banged the wheels, and with these cars, it's, it's not very common, it, it's not uncommon to see uh, this problem uh, with, uh, with this heavy steering wheel. These tattoos Formula 3 cars have very, very heavy steering wheels. 
And we have seen a lot of drivers getting their hand injured uh, with uh, when they made contact because they, 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 they steering wheel snaps from their hands and they pick up very easily wrist injuries. Uh, it was the case for Irina as well. Uh, in the, the first round, she had to miss the altogether the, the, the third round of, of the championship, unfortunately. Um, and so it, it's definitely uh, something that will, uh, it, it wasn't what, what she expected because she is doing the uh, Formula 3 Asian Championship in order to prepare herself for the W Series uh, that also uses the same tattoos Formula 3 cars. So every uh, lap, uh, every kilometer is, is very important uh, for, for her. Uh, and to to uh, you know for, to mileage to to um, pick up more mileage is, is very important for Irina. That comes from a Formula Four uh, season in 2019. So um, she also had uh, no races in single seaters in 2020. She went on to race in the in touring cars in Russia in in 2020, uh, which is definitely not. Uh, you know, experience that she can uh, uh, straight away um, take into the W Series Championship. So definitely, she was looking for uh, for some mileage, a good mileage into the Formula Three Asian Championship, and she had to miss the third round. She was back in, in uh, for for the fourth round um, after just one week because also this championship, like the Formula Four UAE, uh, has a, a five event calendar back to back. So it's very important to to be very consistent and not to miss any races because it's one race after the other uh day after day and also testing and racing testing racing testing so uh, a uh, physical problem or, or an injury is it's very uh problematic uh, on 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 the whole championship uh, Irina entered the fourth round with uh, some some problems, some issues in, on her hand. She said that she was still very much hurting, uh, but didn't want to miss another round. And uh, actually, she had a very very decent round. She had a very very um, she did very well uh, despite all the problems. And she finished P14 and P15 uh, in in into the uh, the first two races, and then P17 in the third one. Uh, so definitely, I would say that she had a very positive weekend. Um, now entering the final uh, uh, race of the uh, of the final final weekend of the of the season, uh, the, starting from tomorrow. Um, Amna also will be back, unfortunately, unfortunately with with the wrist injury herself. Uh, to, uh, today they had testing, but she she will be back on track. She will not miss the races, as far as we know. Uh, and a little um, curious thing, uh, Khaled al Kubaizi, Amna and Hamda's father, also raced in the Formula 3 Asian Championship uh, last weekend in, in Dubai. Uh, and it was a very, you know, it was the fir first time that a daughter and father will, was, were racing together uh, in, in a Formula 3 Championship. That's very exciting. I know a lot of people get excited when it's father or son to have father daughter that's really heartwarming proud moment for the family definitely going to be following in of course we're always counting down to 2021 w series of course we still have months away from it but as we continue our series we've already gone over the top seven drivers each and every week then we did a little recap of some of the first four drivers their chances now we're going to take a look at the first circuit that's going to host the first round the paul ricard circuit in france which will host the season opening race. There you can see the track layout of this course. Of course, it will be part of the Formula One race weekend, so W Series will be utilizing the same course. Daniel, when it comes to the W Series car on the circuit, what are some of the challenges the drivers will be facing on this circuit? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, we, we see the uh, French Grand Prix at, at Paul Ricard uh, last year and also, well, last year we didn't have the, the French Grand Prix, but two years ago in 2019 when we did have the French Grand Prix at Paul Ricard, uh, it didn't provide as much uh, exciting racing as we have hoped probably. Uh, the, it's very, of course, uh, famous for its uh, uh, enormous uh, runoff areas uh, that you know it's it's always something that a driver can push its the limits but uh, it's it's also 
uh, doesn't really reward uh, uh, risks. Um, I would say that it's, 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 it will be very interesting to see the first race of the W Series uh, uh, going into the, the Paul Ricardo. It, it's a, a, a track that most of the drivers know because uh, uh, in any championship they, they raced, uh, sooner or later you will have a test day at Paul Ricardo. It's one of the most popular tracks uh, used for, uh, for testing days uh, all around Europe uh, in any categories, uh, really, in both GT and Formula cars. So I would say that most of the drivers will have uh, uh, knowledge, prior knowledge of the Paul Ricard track, uh, which makes it uh, predictable in some form, uh, but also we've never seen uh, them racing all um, together on, the, on, on, on in there. Um, I would probably say that maybe Jamie and Baiske will have uh, an, an upper hand there as, because uh, they're the most experienced racers. Uh, but yeah, speaking about the, the cars, uh, um, we've seen the Formula Regional European Championship racing at Paul Ricard last year, and we know that they are using the same cars. Uh, even though like, in 2019 they used a different tires manufacturer, uh, this year we, we do know that W Series will not be back with the Hankook tires that they used in 2019, even though they uh, haven't... Um, said yet what kind, what tire manufacturer they will be using so that's going to be interesting to see uh, probably we will be comparing the Formula Regional European Championship and the W Series uh, on, on, on lap times and we, we know that Jamie had uh, was racing in, in the Formula Regional European Championship last year even though she didn't have a, a, like a perfect season but still she had a lot of, of mileage in, in these cars so I would say that it's going to be really interesting even even though they pretty much all know the, 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 the racetrack. Now you do mention they all know the racetrack and another well-known feature, the enormous amount of runoff room. Also the long straight the potential of the slip, especially on that back stretch. We know we have a little bit of chicane there, but still long ways on the throttle. Does this mean the drivers could be more aggressive in practice and car setup, especially this is the only opportunity they're going to have with that mechanic with the car for the race or are they going to be still taking a serious but you know compared to like a narrow street car where monaco you have the walls inches from you here you got the enormous runoff can you be more aggressive at this track well i think definitely uh yeah for sure uh it's it's going to be a very different uh, circuit compared to circuits like monaco for example uh the w series has a for for, a, for a, as a policy uh they do not allow that much of, of a um space for for drivers to set up their cars differently uh this is of course uh, even always to um for for competitive levels because we've seen in 2019 the the, the racing was as close as you'll ever get uh, and with drivers going you know the two different spectrum of, of a setups it can create a little bit more of a, of a uh, differences in, uh, in in competitive levels uh, though the WC is as we said uh, it, you don't have that much uh, of a space in in, in setup cars uh, so it's not going to be, you're not going to be as free, for example, as a team running the, in Formula 3 regional cha European championship, uh, which doesn't, doesn't mean that you will not have uh, a little bit of a, um, you know, of, of a freedom, for example, in, in, um, in, in the suspension area, as we, we spoke for, for example, last year with a couple of drivers saying that. Uh, but yeah, they, most of the times they will be comparing data because, of course, it's a fully spec series. Uh, they have a very interesting uh, approach to open data. So after every every session, every driver can go to, to with with their engineer uh, to compare their da data with um, all of all of the other drivers. And you will definitely want to compare with the drivers that uh, put the car in, in P1 in the session. Uh, so that's very interesting to see uh, session after session how they improve their lap times. But even though they don't have like a fully um, freedom to to set up their cars differently. Now you mentioned, of course, the drivers are going to be comparing how each other progress throughout the weekend. Several drivers in W Series have raced at this course, including Jamie Chadwick and former regionals. There's only six races in the season, so one win. And you only have five races to try to claim that championship. 
Considering that Jamie's Chadwick is a defending champion of the W Series, is she their early favorite? And do you believe there's more pressure on her to go out there and win? Oh, that's a very, very difficult question, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, she is. She will be feeling a little bit of a pressure uh, compared to last year because definitely she comes into the season as a one of the of, of the favorites. Of course, so she will have to defend her the, her championship, uh, and uh, of course, she is looking for that super license points uh, to progress in her career. Maybe uh, doing some. Uh, uh, who, who knows maybe formula one free practice session so she's looking for those super license points so definitely she will feel a little bit more pressure compared to her in, inaugural season in w series but of course also the other drivers have uh, uh, some uh, some degree of uh, of experience of this uh, of this track as we said um but yeah i, I would probably say that jamie bites uh, also, Alice Powell have um, come into the first weekend uh, with some level of, uh, you know, as 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 a favorite. Uh, I would never um, say that Emma Kimilainen is not up, is not going to be up there. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to to see, and also some uh, some upcoming Formula Four drivers that will make their debut in Formula Three. So some rookies in W Series, like uh, we will have, for example, uh, Belen Garcia, Neria Marti, uh, Irina Sidorkova, that is among the, the very few drivers that have uh, experience of, of the Tattoos Formula 3 car in 2020. She's racing, as we said, in, in the Formula 3 Asian Championship. Uh, but also Abby Eaton, for example, a very, very popular driver in, in the UK. Uh, even though she doesn't have that much experience in in uh, formula cars uh i would say that w series in 2010 21 is probably one of the most open categories in in all motorsport that we will ever have uh race after race uh, you, you will not be able to to call who's the favorite even though of course you cannot rule out jamie Baitske, alice emma those drivers uh, that we've saw in uh, in 2019 you bring up some really good drivers with Jamie, Alice, Baiske, Emma, of course. Definitely, I know Marta is going to be a driver to watch. I know a lot of drivers have been talking about her potential this year. That race, I think, is going to be really interesting because I feel, especially as you mentioned, it's going to be such close competition. Someone could go there, get the win. I know we talk about a lot of it here in the United States, especially with NASCAR. Momentum. You have that momentum. Of you went out there. You got the win. You feel on top of the world. If you could maintain that momentum throughout the rest of the season, it would be really hard to beat. Of course, the W Series is going to start in June. Very excited. And we'll be covering the W Series right here as well on our Saturday show, Grid Life Pre-Race and Wrap-Up. And just a friendly reminder to everyone, Grid Life Pre-Race will preview the NASCAR Daytona Road Course races. Of course, we're going to have Jennifer Joe Cobb, Haley Deegan running the truck race. And Natalie Decker making her Xfinity Series debut. Hopefully, if they have good performances, we can have video of their press conferences. Definitely tune into our Saturday show. Be sure to follow Racers, the Girls Behind the Helmet on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and RacersBehindTheHelmet.com. And of course, for Daniel at Racers, the Girls Behind the Helmet, I'm Joe San Diego. Thank you for watching today. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time. Joe San Diego here, want to invite you to go check out Poblis. Poblis is a dog clothing and accessory company based in Austria. 10% of each of your purchases goes to helping dogs in need, whether it's homeless, sick, or ill dogs. This is one of the reasons why we support it. Kiska here is a rescue dog from rural Alaska and our grid office dog. We care about our furry buddies, and we know you do as well. Definitely check out poblist.com. There's a link on the video description, and by clicking on that link, you get a 10% discount on your purchase as well.